also processor related uh, from another one of our vendors uh, who helped put on this workshop. And uh, Aeroflex, he's, I think that if, he, if, if we gave out awards for furthest travel, uh, Jan and his colleague, Daniel, would also uh, probably go to Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I learned their hometown over lunch, but I can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away. Thank you. So my name is uh, Jan Andersson. I'm the chief technologist. CTO of Aer Aeroflex Geisler. We are a Swedish company that develops <coughs> systems and IP cores based around processors uh, with the Spark architecture. Uh, our main products are the Leon 3 and Leon 4 processors. Uh, we also provide operating systems, simulators and debug tools for these systems. Uh, the presentation today uh, will be about uh, uh, system on chip architectures uh, that implement uh, the Leon processor. So I will start up with a short history of the Leon project. Uh, then we'll move on to the Leon 3 FT and Leon 4 processors and look at the systems, current systems and past systems that have uh, included these processors and then what we see as the next generation systems. Um, so the LEON project was started in 97 by the European Space Agency. Uh, the objectives were to find a or develop a processor design which was open, portable and non-proprietary. Uh, <coughs> this processor should also, they should also be able to implement it in a SEU sensitive semiconductor process and maintain correct operation in presence of SEUs. So the Spark architecture was chosen due to it being open and uh, not uh, infected by any patents. And uh, in order to cope with the single event upsets, uh, fault tolerance in the form of error correcting codes were implemented on the memories and uh, for the registers they used TMR. So the first uh, Leon design or Leon device was the Leon Express test chip uh, developed in 2001. Uh, the Leon processor then evolved into the Leon 2 FT distribution, which uh, in, was implemented in, in, among other, in many chips, but perhaps the most famous one is the 8697 from Atmel France. Uh, the Leon 2 FT was developed by the European Sp Space Agency and also Geisler Research. Uh, which then became Aeroflex Geisler. Uh, Aeroflex Geisler then developed the Leon 3 FT and the Leon 4 processors. So the Leon 3 FT is a Spark V8 processor. It's 32-bit. Uh, it has a seven-stage pipeline uh, compared to a five-stage pipeline uh, for the Leon 2 FT. It's highly configurable. Uh, this is perhaps not very interesting for a uh, uh, software workshop, but in the event that you find yourself in a project where you use a programmable device, a Vertex 5 Surf or uh, ProASIC, uh, you should know that uh, there are a lot of options uh, what to include and support in the processor. Uh, the Leon 3 FT is used in devices such as the UT699 from Aeroflex Colorado Springs, the GR712RC from Aeroflex Geisler, it's also used by other companies such as Astrium in their SCOC3 device. Uh, there's also a non-FT variant, which is used in many commercial products such as set-top boxes, uh, GPS receivers, printers, and so on. The latest uh, member of the Leon family is the Leon 4 processor. It has bas basically the same feature set as the, the Leon 3, but it has uh, wider internal data paths, uh, which gives it higher performance. It can also be attached to a wider bus, uh, so you can fetch your instructions and your data quick, more quickly. Uh, the Leon 4 is currently used in commercial projects and also in the next generation microprocessor, which is a ESA development that we will look closer on, closer on later. So moving on to the system on chip architectures. This is how a traditional or typical uh, system on chip device with the Leon processor looks. You have the processor, uh, it's connected to 
all the, the whole system is connected to a single shared bus where you have DMA capable units. Uh, you also have the memory controller, uh, a debug support unit, which can be used uh, to start and stop the processor, uh, read out debug information from trace buffers and so on. And this is the most common architecture, uh, also the most common ar architecture for new developments. Uh, the next step uh, in Leon SOC architecture is going multi-core. Uh, this is a block diagram of our GR712 RC processor, uh, the first rad hard dual core Leon device at least. Um, the architecture here is basically the same thing as uh, in the single processor case. We have this shared bus, but this time we have connected two, pro two processors instead. Uh, and we also have uh, DMA capable units here connected to, to a shared memory controller. Uh, for this device, the GR712, uh, which contains uh, two Leon 3 FTs with uh, dedicated MMUs, they have dedicated level one caches, uh, floating point units. Uh, the, the feature set is, is about the same as for devices like the UT699. No, no special uh, care was taken in order to support, for instance, AMP processing in a, in a safe way. Uh, so the, the best use of the GR712RC is likely to run a simple uh, SMP operating system. Now, a problem when going multi-core is that the use of a single bus or single shared bus uh, soon becomes a, a bottleneck. Uh, we have the memory controller here. Both processors will start to fetch large amounts of data from the memory. We, we can also have DMA units uh, wanting to access external memory. So this, this works when you have two processor cores. But when you go up to four processor cores, you, you see that the scaling factor starts to drop quite drastically. So you, you need to fix that uh, in some way. So what we did uh, was to create this device, which is this architecture is called the next generation microprocessor. I will go into details uh, about that project. Uh, we included a, a level two cache on chip. Uh, and we also use the Leon 4 processors, which have uh, a wider data bus uh, here. Uh, and instead of centering the chip uh, around one single AHP bus, we instead have five AHP buses. Uh, I will return to this, uh, this block diagram to uh, explain things more closely uh, after we look at uh, some of the features of this design. So the NGMP is a, is a European Space Agency project. Uh, ESA identified that there was a need for higher uh, processing performance in uh, European space processors. Uh, and Aeroflex Geisler's assignment uh, has ranged from specification of the design and the current contract will end with uh, us delivering a verified gate net level netlist uh, for ASIC. Uh, as a side, contract during this development. We have also developed a, a functional prototype on our commercial technology. So this shows um, an alternate view of the uh, next generation microprocessor architecture. We have four Leon 4 FT cores. Uh, the, each pair of cores share one uh, floating point unit. And these are connected to, to one <coughs> bus. All the peripherals or units capable of direct memory access are connected through an IUMMU, which uh, provides separation. And all of this is then connected to a level two cache down to a memory bus, which connects a memory controller and also a hardware memory scrubber. So the way this helps SMP scaling is that uh, we, uh, the level two cache has a uh, much smaller uh, latency than going out to main memory, which in the NGMP design is dynamic memory. Um, but um, 
going back to the earlier presentations today, this of course also only helps in the average case. The worst case uh, actually gets, wor uh, gets even worse when introducing a level two cache because you will, if you have a miss here, you will need to do miss processing and then go out to the memory controller in order to fetch the data. So this design is, is uh, aimed at general purpose payload processing. We have not taken any special precautions to, to improve uh, worst case execution time analysis and so on. Uh, but we have implemented uh, a few other new features. Uh, I've mentioned the Leon 4 FTs. Uh, they haven't been implemented in a RAD hard device uh, previously. We have the level two cache, which is a bridge in the bus topology. Uh, this level two cache is highly configurable. Uh, it can be used in copy back operation or write through. It can be locked and be used as on chip RAM, which then would uh, improve predictability. And uh, it has also features like you can protect parts of, uh, of the code and have backup, backup code. Uh, the external memory is, uh, the baseline is DDR2 SDRAM or uh, SDRAM. Uh, how many data bits that are used are selected by a, a bootstrap signal. Uh, you can also configure in software uh, the error correcting code to use. And this can be uh, very good for uh, error recovery because with the help of the hardware memory scrubber, uh, which, I, which is located on this uh, memory bus and does not affect uh, the rest of the system uh, in any big way at least, you, you can perform initi initialization, automatic background scrubbing, error reporting, and it also collects statistics. In case you have a failed external memory device, you can use the, the uh, scrubber to on the fly switch uh, the code and remove one of the memory devices from operation. Uh, and you can continue to execute your application in the meantime. So uh, this provides a, a very graceful degradation uh, of a failed byte lane where you switch the code uh, to a less resilient code, but you stop using the failed device. So you again gain some, some SEU uh, protection. Um, just quickly, the, the memory interfaces for this device, we have a eight port space wire router, a PCI interface, a dual gigabit ethernet interfaces, 1553 the UARTs, uh, SP master and slave, and uh, general purpose IO pins. Uh, in this design, we have added more debug links than we typically have in a Leon system. You can debug the, inter the system through Ethernet, USB, Spacewire, and JTAG. Uh, among the improvements in this design is that we have duplicated some of the hardware. So you have additional timing units. Uh, you have an extended interrupt controller, which allows you to share, uh, uh, get a dedicated interrupt controller for, for instance, three processors or between two processors of your choice. And this allows you to have configurations like three CPUs running Linux, one running Artems, four CPUs running Artems, 